Today we have with us Sonu Sood, Indian actor, producer and humanitarian. In September 2020, Sonu was chosen for the prestigious SDG Special Humanitarian Action Award by the United Nations Development Programme for his humanitarian work during the COVID-19 pandemic. The book that we discussed today, I Am No Masiha, is his extraordinary story of grit, determination, as well as his belief in leading through example. On panel today, also we have veteran journalist and author Meena K. Ayer. And in discussion with Sonu Sood and Meena K. Ayer, we have Millie Aishwarya, who's a publisher with Ebury and Vintage Publishing at Penguin Random House. Her focus has been on championing the best voices in fiction and non-fiction while publishing a range of bestsellers across segments. Over to Millie to take the discussion forward. Hello, everybody. I'm delighted to be here and part of the AKLF 2021. This is the new year, a new beginning. And we are here with our author, Sonu Sood and Meena Iyer. We recently published Sonu and Meena's book, I Am No Messiah, and it's already a bestseller. We've got rave reviews from uh, readers and people from across the country. And I'm delighted that we have both our authors here to talk about the book. So we'll start first, I think, with Sonu. You know, it's uh, 2020 has been such a transformative year for you. It's, it's changed your lives and you've changed lives of so many people. How does it feel? Um, so first of all, thank you so much for having me, uh, Mary. And uh, hi, Miraji. It's always a pleasure. Hello. Uh, <laughs> connecting. I think we're connecting on the Zoom call for the first time. We've been meeting at each other's place quite very, very quite often, but uh, thank you so much, Vinay, for all the um, love that I've been getting f uh, since so many years. And now when we come up with my most special uh, journey ever, so I, I don't think so there can be anyone other than Meena Ji who can be a part of this special one. So thank you so much for that. And yes, um, really, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, 2020, 2020 was very, very special because I... Uh, believe that you know I came to this city to become an actor, uh, but I, I I I believe that you know whatever role that I got to play in this year was the uh, uh, I would say a, a very very special one, and I could connect with millions of people. Um, I could connect with myself. You know I've been trying to do uh, a lot of things in my life, but I think uh, 2020 gave me that uh, chance, taught me a few lessons of life that. Uh, that you know connected with me into so many souls and yes their prayers did wonders uh, and it's a new beginning and I hope that I uh, follow this path uh, rest of my life also. Wonderful, Meena. Uh, you know, uh, like Sonu said, the book would not have happened without you. You know, you have been a pillar for the book. I am no Messiah, and you know we're lucky to have you on the project. We're doing this, you know, as you can see, this conversation also, you know, we're all in three different places. Sonu is, you know, in his car, um, on and about, doing so many a million things that he does. So how was it working with him on the book? You know, uh, what was the process of writing and how was your experience working with Sonu on the book? As, Millie, as you know, the book was done, uh, started during the pandemic and it... Uh, we did a pen down also during the pandemic itself. So most of the book happened through, uh, I mean, there, were, there, were, there was hardly any meeting, actual meeting. It happened through voice notes, which Sonu very diligently sent from all over the place, wherever he was, helping people, migrants standing at highways, standing at Chekanakas. You know, he, he made it a point to fill me up and bring me up to page on whatever was happening. In fact, uh, his uh, descriptions were so vivid. His thoughts were so clear. I sometimes felt as if I was there with him standing there and witnessing what was happening because uh, of the, of the, you know, the depth with which he went into the situation. And for me, that was a new Sonu. I had known him as an actor like the rest of the world. And I'd seen him and most <laughs> his physical attributes were discussed because he's, you know, over six feet tall, six feet three inches tall. He's, you know, got a six pack abs. That was what was earlier discussed. But with this book, uh, it was a very, very different person. And it was as if 
almost like i can see a new person was born yeah you so, know muscles to yeah. heart and thank you so <laughs> no i think that is true you know we all saw yeah, um, you know yes point. um you know um i you know milaji uh, i'm i'm coming from all the way from uh, palgar vasai area uh, i left uh, at around about 4:45 5 am in the morning for my shoot and it felt so far i said yaar i me ra itni dur main ja raha hu travel karke and now and during the pandemic when i was sending migrants so i i used to come there every single day और उस समय कभी दूर नहीं लगता था कि यू नो इट्स सो फार फटाफट पहुंच जाते थे एवरी डे यूज टू गो यू नो कनेक्ट टू दिस बाइक एंड सेंड देम बैक टू द होम्स एंड टुडे व्हेन आई गो फॉर माय वर्क इट सीम्स वेरी फार इज इट थक गया मैन ऑन 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 आई आई विल रिमेंबर रिमेंबर दैट मिशन वी नेवर एक्चुअली थॉट दैट यू नो इट वाज सो फार सो आई थिंक दैट वाज द ड्राइव दैट यू नो पुश जस्ट टू गो आउट कनेक्ट टू दिस बाइक एंड सेंड यस लाइक मीना जी सेड इट्स इट्स अ न्यू चैप्टर इन माय लाइफ एंड मीना जी नोस मी सिंस सो मेनी इयर्स and um, there's no one other than her who can tell me uh, what's the difference uh, between the sonu pre yeah yeah no uh, hello absolutely i think meena like i said right at the beginning has been a pillar for the book i'd like to talk a bit more about the book now sonu so you know this is about your personal journey you know your personal life how you came to bombay uh struggled and made your own name in bollywood which is supposed to be one of the toughest industries but also about you know the story of so many uh people who were stranded on the road and left with you know nowhere to go possibly you know no way to reach home in a way and and you helped came out and helped them during the pandemic and the corona virus infection which was so deadly at that point also you know this is you know i'm talking about march uh, april and so on so what was the defining moment for you you know what is what was it actually that made you step out of your comfort zone and say that you know this is what i want to do um i mean uh, i remember when the whole pandemic started it was uh, a new thing for all of us we thought that you know uh, we have to stay at our homes for uh, maybe a week or so or maybe uh, a week ten days and everything will uh, be normal post that so now realize that um, it's it's going to be a new world uh, that we are uh, going to face and remember you know we are not allowed to even go out uh, across the road to fetch yeah. a loaf of bread uh, so going out was impossible but i i i believe that you know when i was distributing food to all these people and um, i was connecting with them i was spending so much of time with them that's the time i realized you know what kind of bonding uh, i had with them because um, they they felt that you know um, uh, we are we are hungry we don't have any place to stay help us uh, you know some way the way you can and i remember that the first set of people that we um, uh, could send uh, to karnataka were um, the ones who gave me that signal uh, ki sonu this is not the journey of uh, uh, you know these uh, 350 people this is a journey that uh, going to connect you to millions of people and you have to somehow uh, make this happen just go all out and uh, help, help these people and then the prayers of all these people did the trick and uh, you know i was able to uh, you know uh, send them all back to their homes what was the reaction of your family you know you speak about it uh, you know a bit in the book as well but you know you talk about you know the fear and you know uh, almost uh, an impossible kind of a situation where we didn't know what we were dealing with you know it's we're still struggling in a way how how did your family support you or cope with you know what you were trying to do you know ma i remember when um, uh, you know i went for the first time sonali um, said you know i show sure you want to go out you know there's so much of uh, um i mean the lockdown is there no one is allowed to go out but uh, i remember when the first time i went out and the kind of uh, happiness she um, saw on my face she said so no i think you should uh, keep this journey on and you have to uh, help all these people and then the whole migrant movement started and then um, you know i i i realized that this is one mission that's going to stay with me for weeks for months and uh, i have to make this happen and this is how uh, you know every single day i uh, i used to be out and uh, uh, she she realized she was um, 
uh, I would say very worried because we had kids at our uh, home, but yeah. uh, uh, she was equally, um, I would say, uh, inclined and she was um, pushing me that Sonal just go out, you know, and uh, you have to make this happen. So it was a mission that together we could um, uh, you know, fulfill and, uh, you know, we, we made this happen, yeah. Wonderful. You know, there are several stories of, you know, uh, extraordinary stories, actually, of people, uh, their strength, tenacity, and hope in the book, you know, captured in I Am the Messiah. Was there one particular story that, you know, connected with you uh, deeply that you'd like to share with us? Nina, can you hear me? I can. Yeah. I thought the question was so. No, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm asking. You, you know, because you know, you you helped us tell the story. Tell help Sonu tell the story. Oh yes, yes, Billy. I can tell you uh, almost uh, the. Pla uh, I'm sorry for the lapse, but I can tell you that most of the you know the plight of most of the migrants was uh, heart wrenching. But for me, when Sonu helped two girls and a farmer in uh, Telangana, uh, sorry, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, you know, who were actually plowing the field because and not going to school because their father had no, uh, you know, uh, he didn't have an animal to plow the field and the girls were helping their father. Uh, that, that was something. And the way Sonu recounted that story to me, uh, I mean, he also uh, was very emotional and I, have, I personally had tears in my eyes and I was like, oh God, is this what, is this one of the many things that we have discovered? And of course, then the rest is, he got into action immediately and almost like they say, overnight he turned their lives by providing them, you know, with a tractor. It was a Sunday and somehow he moved, uh, you know, heaven and earth to, and sort of gave them a tractor and then they could plow their field and the girls could go back to school. Uh, so that, that, that story, just like I said, they say a picture, you know, is worth a thousand words. Mm. That photograph Sonu brought to me was something outstanding. I, I could, I mean, outstanding in the sense of description, but it was also very sad, the plight of the girls. And I was thinking that, you know, this and many such cases, also some children, who were in a village in Haryana who had to climb trees to study because uh, they wouldn't get network in their area. And young girls and boys alike were climbing trees and rooftops to study. And Sonu and his friend from Chandigarh, uh, they actually, you know, put an airtel tower over there so that these guys would get a network and they would be able to study. And th these were things which... I didn't think possible. I thought only Superman could do it. But during the pandemic, Sonu painted himself in the role of a Superman. And he definitely came to the rescue of, I mean, lakhs. I mean, somebody just walking on the and highway. Keeps counting. Yeah, and keeps <laughs> counting. Of course, then it went into many shapes. He started uh, a work portal for them, Pravasi Rojgar. He started medicines for them, which was large India. It, it, it didn't stop. It hasn't stopped. And I hope, uh, you know, it doesn't stop because we are a country and uh, we who could do with a lot of people who selflessly work forward and, you know, help. So I hope Sonu continues his mission beyond I am no Messiah. And uh, he genuinely becomes India's 24-7 helpline. Like he, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You Thank know, you. I think that is one of the, you know, catch lines that, you know, we always talked about because that is what, you know, Sonu, you've become. I mean, anybody who needs anything, anybody who's in trouble anywhere in the country thinks of God and thinks of you, you know, maybe possibly in the same breath. So, you know, that is what you've become. Uh, how do you deal with this, you know, this kind of expectation, you know, because I have spoken with you earlier and, and you mentioned once to me that, even when you're shooting, there are long queues of people waiting to, you know, just uh, try and reach you and, and see if, you know, they can uh, get you to do something for them, whether it is to do with the surgery of their loved ones or so on. 
how is it to you know you started out with the pandemic and sending people home but it's become a big big movement now you know it's a mass movement and there is a certain expectation you know people feel that you can actually you know help them and no matter what the problem is does the expectation ever bother you uh, how do you deal with that um uh, it uh, doesn't bother me but yeah it um um uh, you know it, it somehow um, it gives me yes a confidence to do it but uh, there's a huge amount of responsibility that i feel on my shoulders you know when i'm shooting like since i, I was shooting in the morning i was in a bad network i was not getting in there so i know how it is people must be uh, messaging me on twitter or on my phones and when i got into the network zone uh, while driving back so i can see almost uh, there are 200 300 messages and you know with the reports so it's not that something you know okay i'm so and so can you help me it's not like that so it comes hi this is so and so these are my reports i'm stuck here in this part of the uh, country and this is my problem so please help me so when that word comes please help me so and um, i i feel that you know, there's a there's a faith that uh, they have uh, put in when they send those messages and they know that it will ha- it will happen and when it happens uh, the the word spreads Uh, more and more and more people come so i um i just want to um, pray to almighty that god should give me uh, uh you know strength so that i keep the good work going i know it's going to be a tough journey but i enjoy um, so much when i'm able to connect with them and we are able to provide with whatever they want in their life so i i just wish pray that you know i keep the um, the, the work that i've uh, that i've been doing all these months so it it has to continue and it has to be a part of my life forever wonderful you know i uh, i know you know you have a fantastic team that works with you it is you and your team is there you know is there in the book as well the people who are behind this whole movement because i mean there is there is so much to do like you said and you moved on you know uh, from one mission to the other and and the work continues even in 2021 you're going on and now you know uh, your shooting has started you know there's like you said you have to be in different places and might not get connectivity but you try and reach out and you know try and help people as much as you can so uh i i'm going to put you in a bit of a spot now and and ask you although i'm i'm sure it'd be very difficult to uh, choose or select but what i mean there's there've been so many uh, people you've helped but you know when you close your eyes in the night or you know um, are there one or two you know instances that come to your mind where you feel that you were lucky to be there and help those people and it made you feel really nice um really uh, yeah there there are many of them but i some, somehow i believe you know i, I think sometimes if the pandemic wouldn't have happened all these people would have been trying to um, you know make both ends meet those girls would have been still plowing the field without the tractor these um, uh, people who have been suffering from uh, these uh, liver transplant uh, liver uh, uh, you know transplant surgeries that they need or the kidney replacement they still have been uh, going through that kind of pain so i think pandemic uh, connected me with these people and all uh, so which was very very special but if you talk about um, uh, some special moments yes i would say those international evacuations were uh, re- very very tough uh, once you know i've never been to those countries i never knew how to get them back but i think um, uh, the zeal was there that i need to uh, you know help them uh, and get connected with their peer parents so i i i feel that was uh, a tough uh, journey uh, that i could um, you know make 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 that happen but again a very important um, uh, thing was you know when uh, the, the first flight that we flew from uh, Co- coaching to uh, bhubaneswar kendra para those uh, 160 uh, 768 girls uh i think that was uh, a huge mission a uh, very tough one where we got those airports uh open for 2 2 hours and we could get them back to their family so i i, I would say those uh, two stories will always be very close to me 
I still get messages every single day on my WhatsApp from all the students that I got from all these different countries and those lot of uh, uh, flights that we flew in India. Every single morning they'll say, uh, "Sonu sir, our God, we love you." And you know all these messages every single day I get from all these students. So those uh, uh, stories will always be a part of, uh, I would say, uh, my my life story. Yes. You know, in closing, I'd like to ask both of you if you have, you know, any any uh, thing to say, any message for for the readers, anything that you'd like to say. We start with Mina. What would you say to your readers uh, of "I Am No Messiah"? I would say, uh, you know, I'm I'm sixty plus, so I can, uh, you know, I've discovered the, uh, um, you know, I've discovered some. Quietness, some zen in my life, but I was very happy that Sonu, who's in his forties, also discovered it. Of course, uh, he discovered it during the pandemic. So I think that you know, somewhere uh, life's calling can come to you at any time in life. It can just you know, some quietly come, not necessarily knock on your door, but knock on your soul and tell you, "Okay, listen, there's a larger purpose in life than just going through what we go through. Like we don't need to exist; we need to live." And sometimes we need to live for others, so that is what I would say. Yeah. Over to you, Sonu. So beautifully put. Thanks, Meena. Sonu. <laughs> um, yeah, of course. Like Meena said, you know, um, you have to discover yourself at some stage of your life. I don't know when it happens. Um, I it happened to me. pandemic and uh, uh, I, I wish they were, they were there to see everything that I, and uh, they must have been really to uh, made this happen they were the ones who were giving me courage guiding it throughout this journey um, they, uh, conveyed it to me that so yes you are the chosen one just make it uh, happen and you have to help all these people so yes um, the most important uh, chapter of my life the most important character that I played And where Almighty was the director, who uh, and 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 like we say, you know, um, I always believe that you know after doing so many movies in all these different languages, I thought that okay, yes, this is what my purpose of life was, and I came to Mumbai. But now I believe and I know this was the purpose that I came to the city for. And now since I've discovered that, um, it's just a beginning, miles to go. But yes, the journey will always be on. Thank you so much, Sonu. I know it's been difficult. Um, you know, you are uh, in the car traveling, and with patchy network in between. Um, uh, but I insisted, and you did make time. So thank you so much. That is one of my experiences uh, of working and publishing on the book. You've always been available, and wherever, whenever you can, you always get back and support us. So thank you so much for doing that. and thank you for doing all the good that you do may god give you all the power and extra special uh energy and bigger bigger heart and all the means uh to do even more good work and thank you so much meena for making you know our dream of publishing the book come true in the pandemic in such difficult and tight deadlines thank you to both of you i'd also like to thank our festival and our host aklf 2021 mayna and anjum it's been a pleasure you know reaching out to more people through your platform and hope you'll enjoy the conversation as much as i did uh, with meena and sonu so thank you and have a great evening thank you mili and thank the festival organizers for this very cute crisp and nice session which is also soul stirring thank you thank you